Good morning. My name is John George. I'm the lead pipe fitting instructor here at Tulsa Welding School, Jacksonville, Florida. And today we are going to go over some uh, pipe threading with you. Uh, Mr. Brian Hatch here can uh, introduce himself and uh, we'll get started right away. Good morning, I'm Brian Hatch. I'm Tulsa Weld School Jacksonville Pipe Program Specialist. I'll be assisting Mr. John this morning in the uh, standard 45 offset. All right, so one of the first things you wanna do when you're doing the pipe fitting is know what project you're gonna build. Okay, so today we have set up is a standard offset using 45 degree threaded elbows and we're going to show you how to do the threading, the cutting, and the calculations to make this project. The project is going to go right in here. You see we have two flanges. They're offset, and uh, the reason we call them offset is because they're just not straight in a line. One is offset from the other, so we have to calculate that distance to use 45s, and that's what we're going to show you today. All right, so Mr. Brian will assist me. He's going to go ahead and get his first measurement, which is going to be our overall. All right, and I'll explain a little bit what he's doing as we're doing it. Uh, the overall measurement will go from flange face to flange face. Here. All right, and the best way to do that is the flange face to flange face would be from here to the flange you're going to. All right, so since they're not in line with each other, you've got to come up with a way to how to get that measurement. So uh, Mr. Brian here is uh, taking a straight edge across there so that he can actually bring the face of that flange over in line with the face of the other flange. That's going to give him a direct measurement so that he can establish what the overall is. And we are currently sitting, uh, Mr. John, at 30, 39 and a quarter. All right, so we're going to go to the board and we're going to write down that first measurement we got. You can see I have it laid out here with our arrows. That is telling us that from this flange, which is our existing, to this flange here, Flange face overall, okay, and we're going to go with 42, all right? Now, the next measurement that we need is the distance from the center of the flange we're starting at to the center of the flange that we're going to, okay? And the best way to do that is, is find yourself something that is solid, straight, and you can measure at two different heights from, okay? So, since we're here at Plant Jacks and we have our corner stanchion post, Okay, they're installed and they're straight. So that gives us an opportunity to use that to help us get our measurements. All right, so Mr. Hatch, I'm gonna go ahead and assist him over here. We're gonna come over, he's gonna go from here to the center of the flange he's got. We're looking at 68 and 5 eighths. 68 and 5 eighths, okay. So we're gonna write down 68 and 5 eighths because he's gotta take a second measurement. And he's going to go to the flange that we're going to from the same point. So the same point of contact. So that way, all we have to do is take those two measurements and subtract them. And we're going to come up with our offset. That would represent the distance between the center of this flange to the center of the flange we're going to. And we are looking at 50 and a quarter, Mr. John. 50 and a quarter. Yes, sir. All right. So we're going to go to our board at 50 and a quarter and we simply have to just subtract them, okay? So doing our uh, fraction math, quarter inch from the 5 eighths, okay? And I like to convert mine from fractions to decimals just because it makes the math so much simpler. So this one here would be 68.625, and our 50 would be 50.250 because 250 represents quarter inch, 625 is 5 eighths, and that just kind of makes your math more simpler if you're not really into the fraction subtraction. Okay, eight, so we got eight, five. 18 and three quarter. Six is five, seven, three, seven, five, eight. So we got 18.375. 375 in a fraction three is eights. three eighths. Okay, so 18 and three eighths is our offset measurement. So that's gonna go right here because we have our A, our B pipe, and our C pipe. So that's 18 and 3 eighths. Yes, sir. All right. So now that we have our two measurements, <clears throat> our 42 and our 18 and 3 eighths, that's the only two measurements we need to go ahead and do the rest of the calculations to make this project. All right. So the first step you wanna start out with is we need to find our A and our C measurement. The way you do that is you take your overall 42, 
subtract your B, which is 18 and 3 eighths. So we will go. All right, so Mr. Brian's gonna do 42. 42 minus 18 and 3, and three eighths. eighths, and we'll come up with 23 and 5 eighths. 23 and 5 eighths. Okay, now, since A and C in this project is of equal lengths, we simply just take that answer and divide it by two to get our A and C. And we divide that by two and we will come up with 11 and 13 sixteenths for our A and C. Now in pipe fitting, unless you're building a nuclear submarine, we generally want to round off to the nearest eighth. So we would look for the nearest eighths and that would be 11 and seven eighths. All right, so up here we just plug in 11 and seven eighths. And since <clears throat> A is the same as C, you just simply bring that measurement down here. All right, so now we have all of our measurements in place. So now we know that we're on a diagonal that's a 45, all right? So what it's involved with that is, is you cannot just do 18 and 3 eighths because you're gonna come up short because there's what we call a travel when you're running on a diagonal. If we were going straight across, okay, we could do 18 and 3 eighths minus our takeoffs. But in this case, since we're on a 45, we have to take this measurement here and times it by the constant for a 45 degree elbow. Your constant for a 45 degree elbow is 1.414. So we're gonna take 18 and 3 eighths, okay? And we'll put it over here, 18 and 3 eighths. And we're gonna times it by 1.414 to get our travel length. And that will give us 26 inches. Bear in mind when using the project calculator, uh, you have an inch function, so you can actually uh, program it in as you would speak it, or you can convert to decimal uh, values if you so choose. But if you have a 18 and 3 eighths, you can simply put in the 1 8, then hit the inch, 3 slash 8, and then you can subtract the decimal fraction from that if you so choose. It really simplifies things for you if you're not a mathematician. But 26 inches, is exactly where we're gonna be at for our travel, taking the 1.414, which is always the constant for a 45 and multiplying that. One of the main things as a pipe fitter that you wanna do is be organized, okay? So anytime that you're doing your math and you're doing your calculations, you wanna have it organized because there's times where there may be a hotter job come up and your boss pulls you off of that job, sends you to another one, and may send you back to this same thing three days later, okay? So if you are not organized, then you're gonna be starting all over again on a project that you've already started and got so far on, okay? So best thing to do is stay organized. So me, myself, I develop a routine that works for me. You develop one that works for you. And what I, I always put my measurements in the same exact spot. So if I come back three days later and my boss says, hey, pick up on that job you left off on, then I can pull this piece of paper out of my gang box, look at it and know exactly where I'm at in this process, okay? So right now in this process, I'm at, I have my measurements all calculated out, and now I wanna do my takeoffs to establish my three cut lengths for my A, B, and C pipe, okay? So one of the golden rules of pipe fitting is simply that if it's not pipe, it's a takeoff, okay? So since we have a flange here at the top of our project, that is not pipe, that is a flange, that is a fitting. So it's gonna have a value to it that is a takeoff. Okay, so on that kind of joint fit up, you have a quarter inch to up to a half inch, what we call pullback. Okay, so inside, when you put that pipe, uh, put the flange on, excuse me, then you have to have a pullback inside so that it can be seal welded inside. Okay, so with the slip on flange that we're using today, Mr. Brown will show you the slip on flange, the pipe actually goes through the flange, okay, and you have to be able to weld a seal weld inside of here once you put this together. Well, if your pipe is flush with this, then you can't put the weld in here because the weld will go out onto the seating surface and we don't ever want to damage the seating surface on a raised face flange. Okay, that's where our gasket seals up against each other. If you put a weld in there, then that creates a leak path. So you'll be re-pulling re that pipe back quarter inch to a half inch so that a weld could be put in here and then the pipe will be in here and the weld will be put on the outside. So it's welded inside and out 
Okay, so that's the reason for the pullback. Also noteworthy, you want to look at the face of that flange. This is where the, 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 uh, the machine surface is. This is where the other flange is going to mate to the other flange. And this is the neck. It's common for the novice pipe fitter to put these on backwards, only to realize that they have a perfect pipe assembly that they cannot fit up. Also, in reference to Mr. Uh, what Mr. John was saying about doing all your, your math and laying it out properly, there were times in the field, Mr. John and I had worked together, where he would calculate uh, 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 the offsets for a project, he'd be placed on another project, and then the uh, yard superintendent would hand me the project and say, here, you're working on this today, and I would have to finish what he left. And because he articulates so well, any craftsman that has the skills to do this offset can pick this up and go exactly where he left off and finish it. So this is, very, this is a very critical portion of the, of the uh, pipe fitting offset. All right, good point. Because you never know who's gonna be doing the project. You may take it to finish and you may not. Okay, so moving along in this project, now that we have all of our measurements, now we wanna do our takeoffs. So like I said, everything in this project that is not pipe has a value to it, and we call that takeoff, all right? So we've already identified that our flange can go from a quarter inch up to a half inch, Okay, then we have a fitting right here, 45 degree fitting. Okay, the takeoff for that fitting will go from the base of here to the center of the fitting. Okay, so if you were to dissect this in half right here and right here at your fittings, this half belongs to A. This half belongs to B. Okay, so that's how you determine what you're taking off. So we're going to calculate out our cut length for A. So that's going to involve a flange and it's gonna involve our fitting, okay? So since we have a threaded portion, I'm gonna tell you and show you how to calculate that out. Okay, so according to the manufacturer, the takeoff for this threaded fitting is an inch and five eighths. All right, if I can draw correctly, all right. From so, center to face. But I have pipe that's gonna be threaded and you'll see that it's gonna screw inside there. Okay, so that's gonna take away some of our takeoff, simply because remember what I said, if it's not pipe, it's a takeoff. But as we put pipe inside here, we're gonna lose takeoff for that. So on the average, my pipe is gonna screw inside this fitting five eighths of an inch. Okay, that's what I'm calculating out. The machine, if it's threaded correctly and you screw it all together and tighten it all up, you should go inside that fitting five eighths of an inch. All right, so knowing that I'm gonna lose five eighths of my fitting because the pipe goes inside it, I simply just subtract them two and I come up with one inch as the value of my fitting, okay? So you can see up here under takeoffs, I got 45 degree equals one inch. Now that I know the value of my fitting and the value of my flange, I can figure out my cut length for my A pipe, all right? So we're starting out with 11 and seven eighths and Mr. Brian's gonna get the handy calculator out just cause it makes life easier. All right, so 11 to 7 eighths, and I have a quarter inch back out for my flange. So we're gonna subtract a quarter of an inch, representing my flange. Minus a quarter inch. Yes, sir. And we'll have 11 and 5 eighths. All right, so we got 11 and 5 eighths. Yep. Now, we also have a fitting. The fitting is one inch, we've determined. So we're just gonna simply subtract one inch. And that's 10 and 5 eighths. So 10 and 5 eighths. And that is now my cut length for pipe A. You see, we started with 11 and 7 eighths. If we were to just cut it 11 and 7 eighths and assemble it, then we're gonna be an inch and a quarter too long. That's why we do the takeoffs. So over here under our cut lengths, we're gonna put in 10 and 5 eighths. And in this thing, A is the same length as C, so the math is already done. We just simply bring that down and we're at 10 and 5 eighths. Okay, so with our A and our C cut now established, now we can work on our B. One of the common mistakes is, is people think of B measurement as your 18 and 3 eighths. Okay, that is known as your offset. Okay, that is the distance from center line here 
the center line over there in, in your triangulation. Once we times it by our constant, because we're using 45, our measurement becomes 26. That is the measurement you do your takeoffs from, because that is going to be your cut length. If you took your measurements from your 18 and did it with that, then you're going to come up way short because you have to allow for the travel. All right, so since our travel is 26, that's where we're going to start with. And in our B measurement right here, we have a fitting and another fitting. Now we know that our fitting value we established is one inch. So having two fittings in there, we simply just take two inches off and we come up with a cut length of 24. All right, so now we have our three cut lengths. We're really done with the math and the measurements. Now, the next step in this project is find a piece of pipe and then we're gonna put it in the machine. We're gonna make our cuts. We're gonna make our threads and then we'll go to assembly. One okay. caveat to this, uh, Mr. John, if I might add, as John annotated, our cut lengths for our A and C are gonna be the same. This holds true if both sides are going to be equal portions. If in the event that you have an obstruction in the way and you have to move your pipe assembly one way or the other, it's very simple. You will still calculate them both as equal portions and then you'll find out how many inches you have to move over and whatever you'll add to here, you'll take away from here or vice versa. That way your, your overall is not, has not changed just because you're moving for an obstruction. You're simply moving the assembly left to right uh, X number of inches. But what you do to one side, you have to do oppositionally to the other. Okay, so what Brian was simply saying is that we don't do offsets just because they're kind of fun to do, all right? It's more economical and cheaper to run a straight line with your pipe with two flanges than it is to calculate and do this offset. So you may be building something that down the road, the engineers have something in mind that may occupy this space right here. So you have to come down, go over it, and then tie back into the system because something may go here or something may go up here. That's why we do an offset, okay? Let's face it, it's a lot cheaper to run a straight piece of pipe with two flanges on it and a lot quicker. So, you know, a company doesn't just do offsets because, you know, they have nothing better to do with their time. This, is, this can be costly if you have a lot of offsets because look at the time it took just to calculate out three cuts of pipe, all right? So again, straight line, Great, but it, the reason we're doing an offset is because in the future, or there may be something already here that you may have to figure out that you have to come down, go around, and then tie back into the system. That's why we do offsets. All right, so our next portion is simply gonna be, we're gonna go to the machine, we're gonna get our piece of pipe, and we'll go ahead and make our cuts. Thank you for watching our video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something today. If you would like to get some more tips and tricks and become a better welder, then subscribe to our channel. And if you would like to learn even more right now, click on our link. Thank you and we'll see you next time.